Good morning, Shipmate Squad. Today we're talking about Asses Orioles. That's right, we're gonna talk about those annoying things that happen when you book freight. So guys, if you've ever booked freight, you know, shipped a couple pallets, shipped the truck, shipped the container, you know about Asses Orioles. Those are the things that get tagged on to the end of your freight bill and you're kind of like, where did these come from? I don't understand them. Today we're going to be talking about some of the most common access orioles and we're going to, you know, briefly go over them so you have a general understanding. Let's get started. First access oriole I want to talk about that, you know, I, I can't stand is the lift gate charge. We've all been there. You know, you're shipping something to somebody who doesn't have a dock and they need a lift gate because Trucks are designed to work with docks, and when there's not a dock, you gotta use a special hydraulic lift that's on the back of only certain trucks, and then it causes you to have to pay extra money for a lift gate charge. Now, not all trucks have lift gates, so if you need one, you wanna make sure that you tell the uh, trucking company or the broker you're using, because the worst thing that could ever happen is the truck gets there to deliver, it can't deliver the pallet or pallets, and all of a sudden, bam, you gotta get a re-delivery fee on top of lift gate charge because that truck can't deliver without the lift gate. So you wanna make sure if you need a lift gate, you're stating you need a lift gate, and it's one of those charges that a lot of times when you're shipping to somebody, they won't tell you they need one. So it's something to you know stay on top of. The next one I wanna talk about is truck order not used. And this one's pretty self-explanatory, but it's one I see all the time. And that is somebody orders a truck, all of a sudden the shipment isn't ready, the shipment isn't going anymore, somebody didn't pay, and you gotta cancel that truck. Well, oftentimes you're charged for ordering the truck that you're now not using because some freight broker somewhere booked that truck, had that truck planned, and now that truck is gonna lose uh, business. It's going to lose things to do if it doesn't come to pick up that uh, pallet or truckload or whatever you're shipping. And because of that, you're charged for that. So that's a really important one to watch out for and to try to avoid. So, you know, don't order a truck unless you know you're going to need it because you're going to be charged. Another big one that kind of goes along with that is redelivery. So this is what happens when a truck shows up for some reason it can't make the delivery or you're not ready to accept the delivery. So it has to attempt another delivery on a different day or later in the day. And because of this, you're charged another fee for that truck having to try to re-deliver. So this is a really big one to also try to avoid. Another thing that kind of goes with re-delivery is something known as detention. So detention is when a truck shows up Usually you have two hours or some set amount of time for that truck to you know, get par parked in your facility or up to your dock and start unloading um, or loading. So if a truck's sitting around for a while and that, that, that truck's losing valuable time on the road, so you can be charged what's known as detention, which is usually charged by the hour, you know, um, usually in quarter hour increments for having that truck sitting there and not being on the road. So you wanna make sure if you order a truck, you know, that you load it in a timely manner or unload it in a timely manner. And that doesn't sit there for extended periods of time because you will be charged. Another thing that's similar to this is a layover. That's when a truck can't make the delivery, so it has to stay there overnight. And when a truck has to sit somewhere overnight because it's not on the road, you will also be charged for that. And that can be another expensive fee that you might be assessed. So it's important to you know avoid that as well. Another big one that I see a lot of new shippers fall victim to is reclassification. So what happens is when you are shipping freight, you usually have to disclose a freight class, right? And that has to do with the density and the types of the items on that truckload. And a lot of times people don't understand freight class or they'll try to save some money and it backfires. And what ends up happening is your class gets reassessed by the carrier and then you're paying more money plus a fee for being reclassed. So you wanna make sure that you're working with your freight broker or the carrier, whoever you're working with, to make sure that you're accurately classing your goods that you're shipping because if your shipment isn't classed correctly, this can incur additional fees and they're totally avoidable. So it's something to watch out for. 
and it's something to keep in mind. Another charge along the same lines as reclassification is oversize or overweight charge. So sometimes when you put something that's a weird size on a pallet, it might be too tall, might be too long, it might weigh too much. You can be given a charge, um, an additional charge for that item. And this varies based on carrier. So, you know, if you have something sticking out over the pallet or, you know, you got something that's like 80 some odd inches tall, you know, you, you can expect to pay an additional fee and sometimes this fee ain't cheap. So, you know, you wanna make sure that your pallets are conforming to the specifications of the carrier you're using and that you're not stacking things too high or having them stick out over pallets. And you wanna make sure you're using accurate weights. So guys, I wanted to lump a whole bunch of them together here. So you have things like uh, advanced notice, uh, residential delivery, metro pickup and delivery. You have things like uh, limited access or restricted access. All these are just are things that make it harder to pick up or deliver. Cause you know, with limited access, the truck might have it difficulty getting to where it needs to go because it has to be at a specific time. You know, residential deliveries can be tricky sometimes because trucks and residential areas don't really mesh too well. You know, there's certain bridges and roads and things they can't go over. Um, you know, cities, deliveries in dense populated areas are sometimes subject to other fees because they might be sitting in traffic, they might have to reroute, you know. So these are all different things that can be assessed and it's something you want to keep in mind is is there like a special circumstance around this delivery that could incur additional charges and you know you want to think about that because there's a whole list of accessorials um, that go with this and you know they vary based on carriers some carriers will charge for that some carriers won't charge for that so you want to make sure that you know, when you're using a freight broker, you disclose everything and that, you know, you're getting the best quote possible based on all these additional requirements that might, you know, affect the overall price of freight. Another thing to keep in mind is fuel surcharge, right? So a lot of times uh, carriers will, you know, segment what their fuel surcharge is based on the price of gas. And, you know, prices of gas vary and you know especially with diesel um so you want to make sure that you're negotiating a fuel surcharge that makes sense with your carrier or sometimes people go for an all-in price and a lot of times that'll be a conservative estimate from the carrier because you know they're assessing they're taking on that extra risk of you know the variance of the fuel price so Something to keep in mind is that fuel surcharge, you know, you will be charged based on the price of fuel. So this can really change how much you're paying in freight. Sometimes you'll pay more than you expect, sometimes you'll pay less than you expect. But this is something pretty standard that you're gonna see on most of your uh, LTL, FTL freight bills and it's something you should be aware of. I also wanna talk about diversion miles and um, extra stops. So a lot of times if a truck has to go out of its way, you're gonna pay an additional surcharge. Um, same thing if you're having it make tons of stops, whether that be tons of pickups or tons of uh, drop-offs, especially with FTL, uh, this is something that happens. You know, you might be filling that truck, but in order to fill that truck, you gotta stop at three or four suppliers before you go to its destination or the other way around. You know, you will be charged for these additional stops. So it's important to consolidate them and limit them as much as possible. So this is something to keep in mind when you're booking your freight is how many stops am I making? How many pickups am I making? How many drop offs am I making? You know, does this make sense? And you know, that's something you'll be charged for by the carrier and possibly through the broker. Another thing to keep in mind is sometimes, especially when you're dealing with lot numbers and goods that can expire, perishables like groceries, things like that, um, you could get charged with a sort and seg charge, um, you know, for that as well as lumper. So lumper is sometimes you'll have to have the driver unload. Um, sometimes the warehouse or the distribution center you work with will outsource to a third party and they'll have a special, you know, designated guy or team that will unload your truck and you'll get charged for that because they're going to charge the freight broker or the freight carrier and that's going to come back to you so a lot of times you know when you're shipping these large distributors and stuff like that you want to watch out for a lumper as well.
Another thing I just want to kind of breeze over is hazardous materials, hazmat. Sometimes hazmat will have an additional charge, usually does, and it's important to disclose what's in that shipment before you ship it in case hazmat is needed. And you want to make sure that everything's on the up and up when it comes to shipping hazardous goods because you know accidents do happen and sometimes that comes back to bite people who don't disclose what's in their shipment. So you want to make sure you're on the up and up when it comes to hazmat. So guys, I know that was a lot of information and I fired it off real quick there. Um, this was meant to be a bit of an overview, get a lot of those charges out there. You know, a lot of the ones that I see in a daily basis and make sure that you know you have a basic understanding of them. Um, there's a lot more information out there on the internet. I would pick specific terms that you know are not quite clear to you and Google them to get more information because it never hurts to learn more. Thank you guys so much for watching my overview on accessorials. Um, if you guys could take a second, give us a like, give us a subscribe, share us with a family member, a friend, whatever. We're trying to get to a thousand subscribers and we need your help. We're this close and you can help get us there.